Hello, everybody. Welcome into the NBA front office show. I'm Trevor Lane. You can find me on Twitter at Trevor underscore Lane. Joined by Keith Smith at Keith Smith NBA. We will dive into the NBA news. But, you know, Keith, I, I thought maybe we'd kick off today's show. First and foremost, say, hey, you know, don't make us continue to be the best kept secret on YouTube. Tell a friend about the show. Let them know. And uh, if you have not subscribed yet over on the YouTube channel, make sure you do subscribe. Or if you're a podcast listener, make sure you're subscribing to the podcast feed so you get all of our shows downloaded directly to your device but you know i i thought i'd start just by kind of mentioning the uh the spirit of this show you and i were just t- talking moments ago about this that we aren't the type that are going to go crazy over made up rumors and things like that's not really what this show was based around and we've been doing this long enough where i figured it was maybe time that we uh re-discuss that that sort of concept i know you, you had a good comment on it just a second ago yeah, I just, you know, we know we could grow the show leaps and bounds with traffic if we did things like, hey, we're going to discuss, you know, LeBron James being traded to the Charlotte Hornets today. Mm-hmm. And, but that's not a thing. That's not a real thing. Like we we could do that. And people would say, wait, LeBron James, Hornets, and we'd probably get a whole bunch of views and people coming in and a million angry comments and, you know, that. And But that's not what we want to do. We want to keep it grounded in factual reporting that's out there uh, from, you know, well-known vetted sources. Uh, and then our own analysis around it. But we've always kind of said, if that's what the show needs to be, we don't want to do it. Then we're yeah. just not going to do it. And, and, uh, you and I will have these conversations ourselves just with no one watching anymore because it's essential what we want it to be. We want it to be the two of us just, you know, talking through it through the latest news and notes and all that sort of stuff. So uh, hopefully you guys are really enjoying it. But Trevor's right. Don't keep us the best kept secret anymore. Tell people, you know, my my loose goal, like I, I, I kind of if you follow me on Twitter, I say like, hey, let's get to I wanted to get to 22K by the end of 2022. Um, I certainly hope we'll be at 23K in subscribers before the end of 2023. But let's push it. Now's the time trade deadlines only a few yep. weeks out you know we've got the off season coming after that we'll be obviously covering the playoffs while those are going on we've got all sorts of fun stuff cool cool things happening so this is now the time if if you've been like i should tell my buddy to watch that show and I promise we're not going to take anything away from you we'll, 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 we'll be here <laughs> you. just like you've always gotten you're, you're not going to lose out uh by by telling somebody else so but please right. you know share the word pass us along whether it's the the youtube version of the show or the podcast ideally both yeah, you know, we'll, we'll 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 take the double dip. So, but yeah, sure. whatever works for you. Find find us wherever you you want to find us and tell your friends. Absolutely, absolutely. Hoops, not hot takes. That's our motto around That's here, and we, and we try to stick with that. But that being said, let's get into get the news. Into um, we've got a few. Uh, this is bizarre. So, the Lakers started off their season with two thumb surgeries. Dennis Schroeder and Thomas Bryant both having surgery on their thumb for the same injury, which was bizarre. And now we've got. A couple of thumb injuries today. Mitchell Robinson out three weeks with a thumb fracture. And then Christian Wood out one week with a fractured left thumb. Obviously, you can fracture your thumb. Not all fractures are are made the same. But just weird that we've got two fractured thumbs on the same show here. Yeah, very, very odd. It, it, it doesn't feel like sometimes like injuries like come in like waves. Like yeah. a couple of years ago, everyone had strained calves. feels like adductor injuries, which is really a groin pull or strain or whatever you want to call it. feels like that's been a much more common thing this year. Uh, but yeah, two, two broken thumbs. Uh, it's big losses for both teams. We'll start with Christian Wood and the Mavericks. Uh, we'll see because it's on his non-shooting hand. He may be able to play through. We know DeMontis Sabonis is playing through a thumb yeah. injury on his non-shooting hand right now. So maybe Wood is able to, you know, once he can probably find the right pad or whatever he's comfortable with, get back out there. And the Mavs need him. Luka needs all the help he can get right now to keep them rolling. Christian Wood's having a great, great season, a really improved defender, which is allowing the Mavs to play. Those four out lineups around him as the lone big on the floor. They just got Dorian Finney-Smith back. Josh Green is back. Maxi Kleba said he'll be back, uh, you know, sometime this season from a torn hamstring, which is a big deal. So you're getting all these guys back. You got to keep keep the the big guy on the floor too, just to to come. And he's proven to be the really the first super successful uh, big man pick and roll partner for Luca that he's had. He hasn't had somebody like that uh, yet in the NBA. 
Yeah, exactly. And they're, they're five out offense when they've got Luke on the floor with four shooters, four guys who can't space things. It's so important for a guy like Luca who does his best work when he can get into the paint, read what the defense is going to do, whether they're going to collapse and he can kick out to a shooter. If they don't, he's going to be able to go use that size, use that craftiness to go finish at the rim. But it's harder for him to do that if there's a, a big clogging up the paint. Now, there are some bigs that he's operated well with in terms of pick and roll situations, being able to throw that lob. So it's not the end of the world if you don't have a floor space sure. and big on the floor for, for Luca, but it does offer a really interesting look and can be very difficult to defend. So Christian Wood, beyond just being a good player, just in terms of his skill set, has been really important for the Mavs this year in providing that type of offense for this team. So um, him being out a week, that's that's not ideal. But again, it's it's certainly more uh, easier to, to weather the storm with him being out for a week than it is for the Knicks to deal with no Mitchell Robinson for three weeks with a thumb it fracture. Yeah, I'm going to say one other thing on Dallas before yeah. we switch over to, to the Knicks and Robinson. I think there's this still thought around that Dallas is fine in their playoff positioning, that they're you know near the top of the conference. They're not anymore. They're eight and a half games behind Denver, eight games behind Memphis. Mm -hmm. uh, they've lost three in a row as those two teams have won. Denver's won eight in a row. Memphis has won 11 in a row. They're even two and a half games behind Sacramento and New Orleans now. They're only two games up on the Phoenix Suns, who are in 11th in the conference. So it's not a spot where it's like, ah, big deal. You know, we're missing a guy for you know, a week or two. We'll, we'll be fine. It's, it, it is a mess from really five back in the West. It's just like, what is this? Like, like I don't even know, you know, fully how to explain this. I mean, if you're the Lakers, yeah, it hasn't gone your way, but you're, you're, you're sitting back there like, well, you know, we're only two and a half games out of six, yeah. right? Like, like we're, we're right there. We're only three and a half behind Dallas and fifth. So yeah, I just, I think people maybe have over thought like Dallas is fine. Like they're in, in, in the end, they probably will be, but this is no longer a situation where Dallas is like, yeah, they're, they're good in the top four and there's no chance they fall out. Like they're, they're already out of that and they're, they're close to out of the whole thing to all together. Just what, what a mess it is in the West. Yeah. Yeah, they've got to figure out a way to uh, to get this done. I mean, you're talking about the the Lakers, like we've been saying, and I mean, Dallas was was part of this. They've had three games in the last week and a half or so where a non call at the at the end of the game may have changed the outcome of the game. In the Dallas game, in fact, it was two non calls. It was one in overtime and one in the end of regulation. Um, I mean, it's it's so ridiculous that the Lakers are in 13th right now. And if you flip the out, if they had made those calls and the outcome of those three games flipped. They're the sixth seed right now. Like yeah. it's 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 insane. That's yeah, it. that's crazy. That's nuts in, in the it, Western Conference. Equally as crazy as the Spurs and Rockets, who are very clearly in full on rebuilding yeah. seasons, are the only two teams that are out of it at all in the West. Like yeah. that. That's just you know that's a whole other like where it's like like I, I struggle to wrap my head around that as we sit here at the end of January that two teams in the conference are completely out of it now. I think we might have a couple teams you know, over the next couple weeks. Be like, yeah, we don't. The plan's yeah. not for us. It's not really where we want to go. But for now, I think all those teams probably more are thinking along the lines of, "We're fine. Get us in the play-in, and then we'll we'll play our way through and into the real thing." Uh, you know, after the play-in tournament. And frankly, the trade market needs a few teams to say, uh, "Yeah, yes. we're out, and we're going to put some yeah. more players on the market." Because right now, supply <laughs> is so low. Yeah. It's causing some big, big problems. I know um, that's not where we're going next, but it's like that's why, like every time Toronto loses, I'm like, is this the one yep. where they're going to be like, all right, this isn't us. We we gotta we we gotta move here. But yeah, all right, let's go back to, to Mitchell Robinson Robinson last night. Like that. that was a that was a rough outing for them last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 I it's shocking how bad they are on defense. Yeah. Like that part doesn't make any sense to me. Like I thought they'd at least be a great defensive team I'm, in Toronto, and they're just they're just not. I did too. I did too. They're definitely not working out there. But uh, but yeah, let's let's jump to Mitchell Robinson. So three weeks with a thumb fracture. Uh, the Knicks. What did what do they do? Uh, is that just uh, more more minutes for Isaiah Hardenstein? What what happens here? Yeah, Hardenstein. I presume steps in, moves in. Uh, they played Jericho Sims a lot when when uh, uh, they they had Robinson out earlier this year. He played a lot in the game where Robinson got hurt. So that's probably what it's going to be. Just slide Hardenstein in, move uh, um, Sims in as the backup, and off we go. They may even start Sims because they may say we like Hardenstein off the bench a little he, bit more. Sims actually um, got more minutes than Hardenstein in the game where Robinson got hurt. Yep. Yeah, so I think I think there's some idea of we need more of that um, 
kind of around the rim presence. That's not what Hardenstein is. He, he's more of a you know mid range kind of guy who who can play. Um, but they, they should be okay. It's Mitchell Robinson was playing really well, probably playing the best basketball of his career. Really, you know, and really started to figure out like, all right, this is what I got to be. I just got to you know hit the boards, play around the rim, do my thing here, and all that stuff. And he was mm-hmm. playing really well. I kind of hope I. I've, no reason to believe this is going to happen. This is just uh, Keith's optimistic corner here. Of, <laughs> let's get Obi Toppin some more minutes, please. Yeah. Like, let's, you know, you know, if we get to run double big, but Tibbs isn't going to do it. So that's just, that's just me dreaming. That's not going to happen with him playing alongside Jewish Randall. So Hardenstein and, and Sims will split the 48 center minutes, probably right down the middle. And, and that, that'll be what it is. Well, Mitchell Robinson is out. Yeah. Yep. That, that's what we're going to see there. Um, Let's see. I thought I had another injury to get into. Oh, I guess not. Look at that. Hey, we'll take I'm, that. I'm so used to having like five <laughs> yeah. different injuries to right? talk about each show um, yeah. that I thought I had another one, but I don't. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to get into trade talks in just Yay. a minute here. But uh, first, Jeannie Buss. Uh, so according to Tony Ganguly of the, the New York Times had this quote, Jeannie Buss went and reassured Darvin Ham. This is from Darvin Ham, again, via Tanya Ganguly of the New York Times, talking about Jeannie Buss. Darvin says, she gave me a big hug and told me, hang in there. You're doing a phenomenal job, and things are going to get right. We're going to start winning consistently, but Darvin, we're totally happy with you, uh, with what you're doing, and you and your staff are doing an excellent job. Then Ham added that it was cool. It was really thoughtful. So Lakers fans have largely been getting frustrated with what they've seen out of uh, Darvin Ham, out of some of the coaching decisions, and now you've got Jeannie Buss, who is you know the governor, the owner, whatever term you want to use of the of the team, going and reassuring him that hey, we're we're still behind you. Uh, how important is that, Keith? Yeah, I mean it's one of those things where right, it used to be the old kiss of death back, yeah, back right. in the day, especially whenever it was like the public statement of support. But it, this wasn't that, right? This was a sounds like a private thing that Darvin Ham chose to disclose, and that's that's great, right? I mean you, it. You always want that reassurance. Now, yeah. here's what I'm going to say to anybody who's getting frustrated with this. And I'm um, dipping back all the way to last season with, with the Boston Celtics is first time head coaches take time. Like they take time to figure it out. Yes, they we're in this world of instant gratification and people do proclaim players a bust midway through their rookie seasons yep. and all those sorts of things. And then two years later, they're like, wow, I was really wrong. That guy's really good. Um, I lived through this. Celtics fans were killing Ime Udoka last season. They were killing Joe Missoula last month of like, this guy stinks. He can't coach. It was and the they were the one seed. <laughs> yeah. And it's, and then ultimately you kind of get there where it's like, Hey, they need time to figure it out. And not only that, but Darvin Ham hasn't exactly been handed an easy situation to figure out. His second best player in Anthony Davis, because I it's weird. I wanted to call him the best player, but LeBron doing what he's doing, like he's still the best player. But it, it is your second best guy being out for now a long chunk of the season. Every other rotation guy, it feels like I, I you you could correct me, I'm probably wrong, but it feels like every other rotation guy has missed a large chunk of the season, too. pretty much. Yeah, so it's like hey, every night it's kind of like, Hey, who's playing tonight? All right, cool, let's go. And that's hard to make work, it's hard to you know do that, um, you know, win a bunch of games and those kind of things. But you know, my thing is, we can have the Darvin Am conversation in April. Let's let's see how the rest of the season plays out, and then you can really take his body of work, or you know, if 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 you want to, or if you prefer and you want to be reactionary, or we'll give him a week or two with a semi full roster, and then yeah. see you know what it looks like then. But I, I think he's doing a good job. I, I don't have any major issues when I watch them. I don't. It's, there's times when I'm like, what are these lineups? But then I yeah. look at who's actually available, and I'm like, what are the options? Right, I don't know what I'd do differently. Like, I guess this is a mess. And you know what? Give the guy credit. You got Russell Westbrook to buy into coming off the bench. That's not a not an easy thing, right? That that was a, a, a solve that they had to make, and, and he he's made it happen so far. That that's just it. I've been um, where I'm at with with Darvin is the same spot where I don't think that you can look at what he's done so far and necessarily just be out on him. Has he made some mistakes? Sure. In terms of, you know, maybe not calling a timeout when he should have, or, you know, putting a player back in that, that people think shouldn't have been in or, or whatever. But the problem is right now, the off the bench at this point, and so many guys hurt, they basically have 10 players right now. 
and five of them are guards. There's not a lot of options for him to really turn to to put together a cohesive lineup out on the floor. They've had more starting lineups than any other team in the NBA, but a part of that has been injuries have just been piling up. So that's just been this constantly rotating cycle of players coming in and out. So given the situation, I think he's done about as well as can be expected. And I will say this, the players are playing hard for him. You can say he's making some mistakes and that's, that's fair, but right now everybody's playing hard night in, night out. They are getting blown out of games because the guys are playing so hard each and every night for him. Like you mentioned, he did get Russell Westbrook to buy in. So there's something there that's clicking with these players. And until, and I don't even want to write him off in terms of X's and O's until we see what he does with a truly healthy team. Cause we haven't even really gotten to see that. Yeah, that's exactly it. Right. Right. You, you play the, um, you, you play hard. That's a reflection on the coach a hundred percent. And if the guys are going hard and they're doing their thing, that's what matters. Like that's a, I get it. Wins and losses matter. Absolutely. But in the situation they're in right now, where guys bring in a full effort and that is very, very easy to see with the Lakers. Yeah. They have very limited players that are having to unfortunately play major rotation roles, but they're playing those major rotation roles hard and to the best of their ability. So that's, you know, what once once that's not happening, then that becomes a whole different question that you have to start to have. But it can't be a one game thing either. Right. You would have to have that conversation if that doesn't happen for a week or for you know multiple games in a row. Then you can have that conversation. All right. Let's move on to. The Miami Heat, they are not trying to trade Kyle Lowry. <laughs> and and all and the 25 teams that have been beating down their door trying to get Kyle Lowry so they can pay his salary next year are so disappointed in this moment, right, Keith? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> what a weird thing. I mean, I guess you, there is a story there because there were rumors that the Heat were in on some guys. And when you really get yeah. into it, it's like, well, the only way to be in on those guys is if you move – Kyle Lowry, but here's the thing. Kyle Lowry this year, shooting 40% from the field, mm -hmm. 33% from three. Like he's down to, he takes, you know, last year he took 2.8 free throws per game. He's down to three this year. Like it's just, he's just not the same player. He's only 5.6 assists. You watch their games pretty regularly. Kyle Lowry is relegated to sets the offensive play, and then he goes and spots up and then yeah. maybe sees the ball, maybe he doesn't. It's just not what he was at one point uh, for Miami, and that that's really tough uh, for him and for the Heat. But if they're going to make any kind of major move, it's going to involve we get a package together, a whole bunch of guys, or it's trade Kyle Lowry. There's just not their, – their roster is, you know, filled with 28 30 plus million dollar players and then a bunch of guys who make right around the minimum so it's very hard to to meet the salary matching in, in big trades the second half interested in jay crowder okay i think we know that that's been out there for you know weeks and weeks this was all from barry jackson of the miami herald by the way so yeah i mean it's great jay, jay crowder played awesome for them it's what do, what do you have that the Suns want though? That that's the the challenge. Like that's you know where are you going? Because they can't imagine Phoenix is like yeah, give us Duncan Robinson, let's go. Right. It just yeah. that doesn't fit anything the Suns need. Yeah, and that's that's the other piece, right? Is that when you look at Duncan Robinson, and Kyle Lowry, uh, Heat not trying to trade Kyle Lowry again. I facetiously was saying you know teams aren't beating down the door to get Kyle Lowry. It could also be Miami saying hey, we're not willing to give up what it would take to trade. Kyle Lowry, because I don't think anybody, as you said, his production has slipped. I don't think anybody's looking at what he's doing right now and saying, yes, I would like to trade for that unless we're getting compensated for it. Same thing with Duncan Robinson. If you're trying to get an Isaiah, uh, a uh, Jay Crowder trade, I don't think that you do something uh, if you're the Suns, unless you're getting back some significant compensation, that's not Duncan Robinson, like the three team trade or something like that. So the heat yeah. may be interested, but it's hard to see a path to them getting that done. Yeah. That almost has to involve a, Hey, what we're going to give you is draft pick compensation only. And maybe it does get down to that. And then we'll spin Duncan Robinson off to Miami or San Antonio if they're willing to eat. Yeah, you know, we'll send them a pick to eat the contract. We'll send you a pick for Crowder. And that's where we go. But if you're Miami, you've already traded other first round picks. It just gets very messy to keep moving first round picks and yeah. those kind of things. Because when your roster is very expensive, you need those picks to do the backfilling of your roster. So that's that, that part gets very tricky as well. So I, I, I don't know. I, I just 
maybe something comes because there may be a point where Crowder's uh, uh, contract is for Phoenix is just like, all right, we're it's two 30 on deadline day. We need whatever we can get to get out of this. And, you know, two seconds, fine. Off we go. We're done with it. Maybe that's where that goes. Yeah. Yep. All right. Uh, speaking of Phoenix, according to Chomps Tarania, the Phoenix Suns are now willing to take on salary, which is a big deal with the new owner coming in and are willing to move a first round pick in order to improve the team. Now, if you look at where they're sitting in the standings, uh, there has to be some kind of urgency there. Again, the Suns have been slipping currently the 11th seed in the Western Conference. Uh, what are your thoughts on on Phoenix, uh, them being willing to take on salary? Does that open up some trade possibilities that maybe were unclear previously? I think it does. I think what you're looking at here now is they can get to $20 million in matching salary with Crowder and Dario Saric, but the problem is finding a $20 million player that's a one-year guy, that's probably not very likely, but if you're willing to take on money into the future, now all of a sudden that opens up possibilities you may not have had otherwise. And I think... That's important with Matt Ishbia coming in. He's basically, it sounds like it's, there was, what was it a week ago or so? It was Robert Sarver needs to approve anything mm-hmm. that takes on more than, I want to say it was four or five million dollars and all that. Now it might be, hey, the new guy's coming in. It's just a matter of getting that sale approved. So we're good to take on money. I think that's where we're at uh, in this situation. And I think with that one, it is going to be, all right, hey, well, we're, we're good to go. We're, we're going to get uh, get this guy in and off we go. So I think that's the, the difference here is now that opens some stuff up for James Jones. In the trading first, I mean, they said it themselves. They don't even scout players. They don't care about the draft. So yeah. whatever, I guess, we'll move on from first and bring in, uh, in uh, you know new talent, established NBA guys, if that's what you want to do. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what they're going to – and it makes sense if you've got this team. It'd be interesting to see what happens with Chris Paul and things. But they're a team that, in theory, despite their standing, is ready to win right now once they get everybody healthy. So them being willing to you know take on a player and, and not worry too much about a draft pick, it, it makes some sense given the way this team's put together. And again, um, to their 11th, but they are two games out of fifth. So probably okay. Right, yeah. I think they can still be in good shape, especially as long as everybody gets healthy. Um, the Warriors, meanwhile, in the West, perhaps hanging on to it. Keep, this is hanging on, keeping on their kids, their young players, Wiseman, Moody, et cetera, but uh, Kaminga. But right now, there's a lot of posturing that's out there too. So we've been hearing for you know a month now, hey, maybe the Warriors will move the kids and they'll get some win now pieces. Now suddenly hearing, oh no, the Warriors are keeping the kids. I have to wor- wonder how much of that is the Warriors saying, well, we don't like the offers that we're getting. So, yeah, we're just going to hang on to them in an effort to try to get, you know, some better offers coming in. Yeah, I, I think there's probably some of that. But I also think there's some with the Warriors of, you know, their ownership talked very openly about, hey, we now could, you know, start a you know Spurs-like window because mm-hmm. we've got our core and then we've got all these kids and ready to go in the next, you know, iteration and all that stuff. And yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm not fully sold that that's going to be where this goes now, because I say with James Wiseman, I've been saying this for a while. It's not going to happen in golden state. He's never going to get the minutes he needs to become the best version of himself. Maybe this is the best version, but we don't know that for certain yet. So I think that's the the challenge and we're never going to find out there. I'd be reluctant to trade Jonathan Kaminga. I think he's really starting to come along. He was playing quite well before he got injured uh, most recently. So I'm, you know, yeah, if they want to keep him, that makes sense. Moses Moody. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, and now saying they want to add a wing instead of going for a big, that's a little, you know, odd. Like it feels like you've got enough wings, but I don't yeah. know. I guess, guess you maybe can never have enough wings. I, I don't know. So just a but weird that's, situation. That's where your Celtics really had success against them last night was on the boards. You would think. Yeah. Now, now, maybe again, this report came, maybe this was from information from prior to that game, but. If anything, that game screams, you need another big. Yeah, I mean, Boston destroyed them inside. They, I think it was 52 to 30 in the paint, and the Celtics missed 11 shots at the rim, so that should have and could have been even worse. And then they, they, uh, Boston had 18 offensive rebounds in that game for, you know, a bunch of second chance points. So, yeah, they, they really did, uh, you know, hammer them in the paint. So, and it was, that's one of those ones where, Hey, cool. The stats completely matched what I saw because I was, you know, jumped off the page that the Celtics were just all over them uh inside. And it's that 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 is tough. So yeah, my personal opinion is they need another four or five 
that can come in, play behind Draymond and Looney. I didn't understand the lineup change last night. I thought that was very weird. Out of the Warriors, that starting group of Looney, Green, Wiggins, Thompson, and Curry, they haven't played together a lot, but when they have, they've been very good. I didn't really get why why Steve Kerr changed things up, but, you know, it's I, my guess is he's just looking for a little spark or something to figure it out. And so, I mean, they lost in overtime, so it's not like it was a complete disaster or anything. Yeah. But yeah, well, we'll see, you know, where, where it goes from here. And then Anthony Lamb sounds like they're definitely going to convert him. He's one of their two way guys. He's a regular rotation guy nightly for them. So he plays all the time. Uh, this was all from Anthony Slater at the athletic, um, all this uh, little Warriors nuggets here of you know where what they're looking to do. So yeah, you know, that makes sense to me to convert Lamb. He's been you know if you're a rotation guy on a two way team needs you for the playoffs. The only answer is to convert, and they are yep. sitting on an open standard roster spot right now. So that makes plenty of sense for them to go ahead and do that. Um, jumping over to let's go to Milwaukee, the Bucks. Looking to move on from Ibaka. He's not with the team now. They're going to move Serge Ibaka at some point. I. Where does he go, though? Are there a lot of teams out there clamoring for Serge Ibaka? Yeah, I'm not trying to be mean, but no. Like, yeah. it's, it's you know, he, he's been hurt. Doesn't look good when he has played over the last uh, couple seasons. It's probably pretty close to done for him. My guess is if they can't find a trade to throw him into, they just buy him out for the roster spot. He's on a minimum anyway, and then he'll probably catch on with somebody just to be, you know, depth for the stretch run in the playoffs, but there's, I, I I don't think there's much left there. Yeah, uh, agreed. So we'll see what ultimately happens with Sergi Baca. But again, they're going to try. I mean, good to for them. Training. They're trying to do right by him, right? That's what you do if you're trying to. But yeah, probably right by him probably is just we'll eat the salary and move along. Uh, speaking of aging bigs, veterans, Gorgi Jang, <laughs> once a uh, analytics darling, is uh, signed to another 10-day contract with the Spurs. Uh, this is his second one, so this is it. He yep. gets this one and then figure out what he does from here. Yeah, my guess is this is the Spurs. We're going to bring him back in. And then they may let him kind of, hey, go go put your feet up, take an extended all-star break uh, for you. We'll see you after the trade deadline. If we have a roster spot, happy to bring you back in. If not, then, you know, we don't. We'll you know, regroup with you down the line somewhere. But they love him there. He's a you know, beloved yep. locker room guy. He's somebody they really have enjoyed having around. So they'll, they'll, they'll do something. Uh, with him unless they run out of roster spots which we'll see what the Spurs do with the deadline you know they, they've they got a lot of interesting guys that could help a whole bunch of teams uh, on the if, if they want to start moving on from those players and they could take on salary so that, that's yeah, something totally. to keep an eye on as well um, let's see here we have the Rockets surprise surprise they're <laughs> willing to keep everybody believe us we are definitely totally willing to keep Eric Gordon unless you meet are asking price. Eric Gordon has been on the trade block for years and nobody's been willing to give up the first that the Rockets want. So now three weeks before the trade deadline comes out, Oh no, we will totally definitely keep him if you don't. And I, I think that's, I wonder if there's some sense that he could be a buyout candidate if he doesn't get traded at the, yeah, at the deadline. And so that's to push back against that. Like, no, 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 no. You won't get him for free on the buyout market. If you want him, you have to trade for yeah, and that was uh, Tim McMahon had this on the, I don't know what ESPN calls all their podcasts, but Tim McMahon of ESPN, who's connected with all the, the Texas teams, he he had said um, one of the things that, that's also out there is, well, James Harden really likes playing with Eric Gordon, so yeah. if that's going to be a thing, maybe we'll just keep him you know, for that reason. But contract is fully non-guaranteed for next year, unless the team he is on uh, – is it wins the NBA finals, then it becomes fully guaranteed or he makes all-star. He's obviously not going to make the all-star team. So that's where that kind of becomes of, you know, all right, well, if he's in the finals, then that contract could become fully guaranteed, Mm -hmm. but you're really probably looking at a, you know, this is an expiring deal. And I think you're right with the buyout of like, Hey, we're not just going to buy him out. Like, Like if you want him and you definitely want to get him. And the thing that's funny is I think Eric Gordon, and I'm going to add Terrence Ross. I'm just adding him myself here for the entire duration of the time we've known each other. These two guys have probably been on the trade market yep. and then never get traded. So it's like, Hey, here's an annual conversation we can have. So we'll just schedule this again for uh, late January, early February next year. But it really does feel like, these are guys who could help teams 
And it's like, don't be stubborn now. I got it before when they still had years to run on their deals, but we're, we're at the end now. Now it's time, go get what you can and let these guys go, you know, play out the last few years of, of their career on productive, you know, teams play, playing well. So, you know, don't let, let's not be stubborn here. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And to give you guys an idea of how long that is, uh, Keith, I can remember talking to you about LeBron's free agency and whether there was a path for him to come to the Lakers. And we probably knew each other even before that. Yeah, I think so. I'm pretty sure we, we did. It was it was well before that. But um, yeah, so it's been a while, basically, yeah. is how long these guys have been on the trade block. It's All the days time. when we used to break down and lament the, the Lou Aldang stretched money, uh, oh preventing the Lakers potentially from doing what they needed to do. When does that come off the books again? Yeah, we, <laughs> right? we went over that just a, just a few times. Just, just a few handful. times. Yeah. Let's. Can, uh, they, can, can it be traded? Can they adjust it? Can they do? Yes. Can, they, once they once you buy him out, once you waive that money, <laughs> yep. can you still trade it down the road, or is it just dead money? Yep. 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 It. Yep. We had a little celebration when that money finally came off the books, but uh, yeah, uh, Luca. Luca is getting involved in roster decisions now with the Dallas Mavericks. We talked about this the other day about the mural and everything in Dallas and Mark Cuban not being happy about it. It's, you know, send help for Luca. Uh, now he's finally getting involved here in, in roster decisions, which makes sense. I mean, this isn't an, a uh, out of the ordinary thing for a superstar player to have some say in roster decisions. But this is, I think it's important for the Mavs in terms of keeping Luca, keeping him happy, keeping him informed because if this can like at some point, we know where this is heading right now. At some point, it might not be this year. It could be three years from now. It could be whenever. But at some point, Luca is going to get tired of being on a mediocre team and not having other players around him. And that could become a, a problem for Dallas. So get him involved in some of the decision making here, make him feel bought in part of the process. All of that uh, is important. And, uh, and hopefully ultimately results in landing that kind of second fiddle that he, that he really needs. They've been looking to looking for for years. Yeah, I, I thought this was really interesting, you know, where Tim McMahon put it out there that Luca has, you know, wants him to upgrade. Mark Cuban came back and was like, yeah. Luca's never said that. This isn't true. And that was a little weird. It's just, I, I'm guessing Mark Cuban just has time on his hands right now. Um, but then it was, I thought McMahon's follow up was the real newsworthy thing is Luca's starting to get involved. This is the exact quote from McMahon, where previously it's always been like, y'all can let me know, but I don't really want to be involved right now. He's starting to be much more involved. The ideas aren't just being bounced off him, is my understanding. He's bouncing some ideas the other way as well. And that's interesting because now what changes there situationally is he's saying, I would like to play with player X, as opposed to them coming to him and saying, hey, you want to play with this guy? Now, if he really is saying, hey, could we get? this guy yeah. that's that to me is you know luca taking a more active involvement and you know what shocker superstar player that's amazing mvp candidate involved in team roster decisions what what a right. surprising development this is this is just how it goes eh, in the league this is a i always say this is the superstars right they 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 start you know uh calling some shots or if it's not going to be called their shots the way they like them then it turns into all right see you later i'm moving on Yep. This is the way it goes in the NBA, the modern NBA. It's how it is. So this is not a surprise at all. Yeah. And, and again, it's, it. it's not yeah. changing. Yeah. Yes. Yes, indeed. All right. Why don't we wrap things up there? Appreciate Thanks. everybody for joining us. Once again, don't keep us the best kept secret. Make sure you tell a friend, <laughs> let them know to come find us over on YouTube. Make sure you are subscribing. And then of course you can also follow us over on Apple podcast, Spotify, wherever it is that you listen to podcasts Have a fantastic. I can't. It's Friday. Yeah, it is. I can't believe it. It's Dude, Friday. January have a, have is a almost Friday. Friday. How was this to possible? I my wife the other day. I was like, how is January basically done? Like, where did this month go? Like, crazy. I don't even, like, yeah, crazy. Flying by. Flying by. But have a fantastic Friday, everyone. Have a wonderful weekend. See ya and stay safe.